We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. Tonight's question comes from longtime fan of the show, Red Meeple Ryan, who asks, could you do a show that is a roundup of all the Robotech games since there seem to be so many of them out there now? Uh, yes, Ryan. Yes, we could. And we're going to do it right now. Well, it certainly sounds like we're doing one, so that must be the case. Now, for those of you who don't know what Robotech is, it started as a mashup of multiple different Japanese mecha anime shows that were mashed up, hacked up, and glued back together by Harmony Gold and released to North America on network TV when Sean and I were growing up. Now, Harmony Gold created three different series, and each day of the week, they would show an episode from a different series, which I got to say was confusing as heck. Now, the three series are called the Macross Saga, which told the story of the SDF-1 and Rick Hunter and the singer Minmay, the Robotech Masters, which was all about a ground battle with hover tanks and Dana Sterling, and the Next Generation, which featured the coolest mecha on the planet, the Cyclones and the battle against the Invid. Now, the thing all three of these series had in common was very cool mecha and the fight over an energy resource called Protocolter. Honestly, as a kid, it was confusing as heck trying to figure out <laughs> what was going on, who was who, what the goal was each day. But what you did know was that there were going to be some cool characters, big mecha, and probably some cool battles. Now, after the original three series, Harmony Gold attempted a number of follow-ups, none of which really took off the way the original did. There was Robotech 2, The Sentinels. There was Robotech, the movie, which was only released for home video in Europe. And if anyone's got a copy of that, I would love to see it, because I didn't even know that existed until doing research for this episode. There was Robotech, The Shadow Chronicles, which was supposed to come out for the 20th anniversary, but got delayed a number of years due to legal issues. So you can now find it on DVD. Most recently, there was Robotech Love Live Alive, which came out in 2013. So that is actually the most recent Robotech animation you can find, which is actually a hack of the original OVA Genesis Climber Mospeda Love Live Alive. Now, Genesis Climber was the original Japanese series that the next generation was based on. The cool one with the Cyclones and the Envid. That's right. And if you didn't keep track of it, out, uh, track of things, don't worry. There are many lawyers out there who have been tracking all sorts of things. Yes, due to the way Robotech property and the license was created, imported, and sold to toy, comic book, and game companies, there have been a large number of legal disputes over the years, none of which we're going to get into detail about here on this show. Now, if you are interested in learning more about the history of the cartoons and the legal battles, I strongly recommend checking out Toy Galaxy TV on YouTube, who have continued updating their Robotech tales with each new legal battle. You can check out the link below with their newest video on Robotech coming out just within the last six or eight months. All right, let's get to the tabletop games, the actual stuff our listeners care about. So there have been quite a few, but not a lot of Robotech games released over the years, some more popular than others. Now, at this point, Robotech is in no way a dead license. New games and products continue to be released to this day. So what we're going to try to do tonight is give you a comprehensive list of the officially published Robotech games, listing them as close as I could in the order they were released. I will say for some of this, all I knew was what year, so I kind of had put them in whatever order I wanted. Now, this will be a mix of games that are still supported and games that are now long out of print. Though most of the out of print games are still available for purchase on the secondary market and can be found in game stores as new old stock. Now, there may be something particularly out there in the non-North American market we didn't mm -hmm. run into. Again, the legal battles around this series are manifold, so there are certainly obscure products out there. And I've got to say, we did not touch anything that is the original Japanese series. We are looking for the stuff that Harmony Gold packed up and rebuilt, not going back to the originals. So I'm going to start off with out-of-print games. 
we have probably the most well-known Robotech tabletop game, and that is the Robotech role-playing game from Palladium Games. This was originally published in 1986. Now, for years and years, Palladium had and strongly enforced the Robotech license. They had an exclusive deal with Harmony Gold to produce Robotech content, and that included more than just games. Now, Palladium worked with Harmony Gold to produce the Shadow Chronicles. So the, the first new series that came out was actually a joint venture between Palladium and Harmony Gold. They also worked with Harmony Gold to add to the existing canon of Robotech through their role-playing game and other products. Now, the role-playing game used Palladium's homebrew system, which was originally from the Palladium Fantasy role-playing game, which itself has its roots in D&D. Stats are determined by 3D6, though there's some weird rules where if you roll high enough, you get to roll more and keep adding to it. It uh, uses a D20 for most of your resolution, and it uses something called OCCs, Occupational Character Classes, to replace your normal you know, fighter, thief, and there are tons of them, like possibly hundreds of OCCs over all the Palladium games. Now, this system is possibly best known for introducing the com concept of MDC and SDC which is a damage system to simulate the difference in scale between a personal combat and mecha battles, which is something obviously required for any Robotech style game because both scales happen so much in the series. For years, Palladium was the go-to source for Robotech gaming until they completely lost the license in 2018. It's due to that license ending, most of the other games on this list even exist and why you didn't really see Robotech games or new Robotech games before 2018. And yes, we could spend days talking about the problems of MDC <laughs> versus SDC and so forth, but instead I like to let the system live undisturbed in history for those who love it and the advances in Robotech canon it brought to us yes. by painstakingly translating works never before published in English to create their game as authentically as anything could be. And I will admit, I am one of the fanboys that bought the books just to read them and look at the awesome artwork. So the first non-RPG Robotech product to come out was the Robotech CCG, or collectible card game, back in 2006. This was published by Hero Factory Games. This was a non-collectible two-player card game, which obviously was trying to cash in on the CCG craze at the time. Magic the Gathering being, of course, the most well-known and still most popular CCG out there. Now, there were five decks produced, including a multi-faction starter deck and then other ones you could buy to add to it. 250 cards in total were produced, with many expansions planned that never happened. Amusingly, if you go to their Board Game Geek page, it's still written as if they're coming, because no one went in to update it once the game died. Now, the game was obviously based on Magic the Gathering, with the one big twist, because every CCG that came out at the time twisted it some way, was the ability to use your cards to attack other cards and not just attack your opponent. And along with that, they had an interfence, intercept defense ability, where some units could be used to defend others, which I gotta say is a good idea for a Robotech type game. They also had rules for transforming mecha. I couldn't find the details on this. I couldn't tell if it was like you play a card over another card or what changed when the mecha changed transform but there was a transforming mecha thing uh, this game does feature a ton of great looking robotech art right from the series and um, this is set just in the macross series the original first series now i know i tried this one back in the day but was never impressed enough by it to keep deep diving it if i can't remember if my dad bought a deck or some one of my friends had it or even if i bought it if i bought it i sold it off so this one didn't catch my eye back in the day so despite the name, despite actually being called Robotech the CCG, there is nothing actually CCG collectible about no. this game. Uh, unless, of course, you step forward in time to where the game has failed completely and you just want some neat cards with great art. Today, it's a collectible, but yep. sadly not for its great gameplay. Yeah, this one's not cheap to go like you. This isn't one you're probably going to hunt out to try out at this point. Now we got to fast forward all the way to 2014. Many, many years later, the next one that comes out, we're back to Palladium and what many consider the biggest Kickstarter debacle in gaming history. So far, I will add that caveat. With Robotech RPG Tactics, uh, this entire thing was a disaster from the start, long before the Kickstarter mess happened. Beginning with Palladium stealing the game from another designer, 
a designer I personally was working with at the time trying to promote their new Robotech game. But now is not the time for that story. Robotech RPG Tactics is a skirmish level miniature game based on the Palladium RPG system it's named after. It was designed to be played on its own or integrated with the role playing game. Now, similar to games like X Wing, there were a series of waves of new mecha scheduled to be produced, um, with many of them never seeing the light of day despite people paying for them. Now, besides the failure to deliver on promises, this game had many other problems including the most fiddly miniatures I have ever seen in my entire life that were just Bandai model kits scaled down to 28 millimeter scale, overly complicated fiddly rules, and poor production quality uh, on the required components and boards and cards. Now, I did pick this one up myself because I was curious. I only paid $20 for it, and I honestly don't even feel I got my money's worth for that one. So my heart goes out to those of you who did back this on Kickstarter, especially if you went all in. Um, I have considered at some point in the future trying to live stream me trying to make one of those miniatures, but that probably won't actually happen. But I do think it will be an amusing stream, and we'll have to make sure to turn on that explicit tag if I ever do so. We have the unboxing of this on our channel, and while it's one of our older ones, it's still fun to see how ridiculous this product really is, especially the miniaturized minis. Now we jump forward again to 2018. As I mentioned earlier, this is the year Palladium loses the exclusive Robotech license, and a wave of new Robotech games pours in from other publishers. I will note that as far as I can tell, Palladium has not lost the exclusivity, but completely lost the license. None of the games we are mentioning tonight from Palladium are listed on their website anymore. So you can no longer get them from Palladium. Now, the first game to hit the market, now that Palladium's gone, we got new people on the field, is Robotech Force of Arms. This is from Dave Killingsworth in Solar Flare Games. This is a quick playing two-player math-based games where players are maneuvering a grid of ships, capital ships, while playing attacking cards, your fighters, at the ends of rows and columns. Once all cards are placed, the battle is resolved by adding up values on the cards and basically doing a bunch of math on the grid to see who either defends the ship that the, in the cross section or who destroys the ship, depending on what you're trying to do. Now, I've still got my copy of this game, and if you want to know more about it, check out our reviews, either on YouTube or on the blog. I found it to be a quick and simple to learn game, a pretty interesting filler game with enough meat to it to keep me involved. But the Robotech thing really didn't come out all that strongly, and I think it could have been rethemed as anything. A lot of the love for this game comes from the swell of nostalgia one feels from the art on it. The game itself is a solid enough strategic tug-of-war duel with no real mechanical connection to the content. Not a bad game at all, just not a great game. And I think many will come away feeling it wasn't a Robotech game in anything but its skin. Well, next to come out was Robotech Ace Pilot. This was from Jeff Michlinski and Strange Machine Games and is now being published by Japanime Games. And I'm not sure what the deal is there. This is another quick, easy to learn game sim simulating a Robotech dogfight. Again, Macross series. Again, Force of Arms. Uh, sorry, unlike Force of Arms, this plays two to four players. Two or four. Sorry, not two, two, four. Two or four players. Uh, you're playing in teams, one or two, and it is dice-driven instead of being card-driven. What you're doing is you are rolling dice, trying to match the patterns on crew cards that are out there, and each crew card shows an attack pattern. You're then going to apply that attack pattern to a set of tiles in a 3x3 three three grid and this like little plastic holder, so there's sticks of, stacks of tiles. And then based on your attack, you're going to remove those tiles, and that's who you've defeated. Each character has a different pattern, and that's where supposedly thematically different characters are better at different things. I got to demo this one at Origins. I thought it was a neat filler game, but it seemed too simple to me. Like there just wasn't enough going on. Like it reminded me of games like Roll For It with a bit more to it. And again, totally abstract. Like there wasn't really anything to tell me. Like why does Rick Hunter attack in an X pattern and Scott attacks in a T? Like it just wasn't a lot tying to Robotech theme here. Yeah, it's, it's a dice-chucking filler, super light, highly random. If you've shared your love of Robotech with your kids, I would actually say this might be a must-buy. Otherwise, weigh your options. The nostalgia will 
wear off. Now, released at the same time of Ace Pilot, or at least in the same month, because I was able to narrow it down, the biggest Robotech board game out there, even to date, was published. This is Robotech Attack on the STF-1. This one is also by Jeff Michlinski, who worked with Darius Hambleton. Uh, this was also published by Strange Machine Games, and again, picked up later by Japanime Games. This is Mac Cross in a Box. This features a full campaign mode with a series of battles occurring around a rather large um, 3D cardboard SDF-1 you assemble. And yes, it can transform to, to a Battletech Battleoid mode. Uh, features all your popular characters. Um, you can get upgraded components for this one, including standees for the characters. There's even deluxe dice. Um, this one is big with lots of components and a price point to match. Now, while I didn't actually get to play this game, I did get a description of play from one of the designers, and I'm not sure which it was, and a short kind of demo of part of a game when I was at Origins the year this came out. So this is basically a tower defense game with various different scenarios you play through. Like in one scenario, different ships will be here, and in another scenario, everyone's on the ship. And in the next one, some of the people are already out in their Veritex and so on. There's also like trying to travel through a minefield. The gameplay in this reminded me a lot of Star Trek Panic, Though the designer does claim it wasn't an influence. To me, this is a step, significant step above the Panic games. Like you've got that whole uh, round radar, like around your ship and things moving in, but that's about it. Uh, this was obviously a game designed by Robotech fans for Robotech fans, leading into the geeks like lots of minutia and numbers. There's a lot of number tracking and things going on here, dice combat and stuff like this. And to be honest, this one's on my wish list. I would love to try this game out. This looks like it could be really solid and do a great job of capturing that actual Robotech Macross era feel of you're out in space trying to get home and fighting through waves of enemies and all the stuff that made Macross great. I will say that going through reviews and discussions on this game, if you're a Robotech fan, you'll love it. But mm -hmm. if you're not, you might want to just walk away. Fair. It doesn't do anything mechanically original, but it might be the first board game on this list that has actually done some real work connecting the license to the game. I agree. Uh, and just to point out that uh, Strange Machine Games does still list all of these games on their website, but only to point you to Japanime games yeah, to sell them. Sense. So apparently they have the design license but probably design, uh, determined that Japanime Games was a better Publisher. source for, as a publisher. Yeah. Well, I think that's it. I think Strange Machine Games was an indie gaming company who got the role-playing game license and published the games themselves. They've now been picked up by Japanime Games, signing some form of license there to, for Japanime Games to publish and distribute, which is a pretty common thing. Like That's, yeah. not, uh, that's, that's pretty common in this industry <laughs> and honestly good on Strange Machine Games for pulling that off. All right, moving up to 2019. We've got a number of new Robotech games, and for whatever reason, the people who entered the data on Board Game Geek and trying to dig around, and there's Kickstarters, there's kind of a mess here. I wasn't able to pinpoint the exact release date, so I'm just going to list them in a random order, starting with Robotech Crisis Point. Now, this is the second one from Killingsworth and Solar Flare. If you notice, we're going to mention two companies repeatedly here tonight, which is, this, this is very similar to Force of Arms, but everything is bigger, including the physical box. Um, this moves on to the second Robotech series, so the first game that isn't Macross. Uh, this is based on the Robotech Masters series. And actually, this is the only game that so far has been published in the Robotech Masters timeline, which I thought was interesting. I, I will admit, as a kid, that was my least favorite, so maybe it's, it's everyone else's too. Now, this game, like Force of Arms, features two players battling with units over a grid, except this time the grid is huge, um, and you're filling the grid as you play, as well as playing your units on the outside. So you're, you're putting in established stuff in the middle, as well as playing stuff on the outside. And of course, being a card game, there's lots of exceptions moving things around. It's still, though, the end result is basically the same. You're going to end up at the end with the board filled, and you're going to start adding up your rows and columns to see what happens. Now, we played and reviewed this one, and I found it to be much more enjoyable than Force of Arms. There's just more going on, there's more depth, there's more player agency, and less randomness. The only issue, though, is that yet again, this is just an abstract math game, right? It reminds me of something 
published by Rainier Nitzia, and it still isn't very Robotech feeling. And again, for more info, check out our reviews. Yeah, unfortunately, the game also has some ambiguities, some rule book yeah. problems, and other issues that suggest a lack of proper testing. Now, while it's a noticeable step up from its little brother, Force of Arms, it's still a painted on theme. Mm -hmm. And when combined with some of the problems, it makes it a hard sell. Uh, it is notable that uh, most of the forum posts for this game are clarifications from the designer. Yeah. Um, and, and what's I... also actually really interesting is Solar Flare Games does not list any of their Robotech games under their games tab on their own website. Oh, well, maybe they've now lost. They talk or about like their the blog license? posts are there, but there the under the games tab there are no. So that would have to be a recent change because when we reviewed them, it was from Solar Flare. Actually, it was Dave Killingsworth reached out personally. Yeah, absolutely. So they definitely did when we reviewed the games, and that was in 2019, I think. So, all right. Next, we have Robotech Brace for Impact. This one comes from a totally new source, Nick Ferris who worked with Escape Velocity games and, of course, Strange Machine games. Again, I think Strange Machine here just had the license, and Nick did kind of took that license, did their own thing. Now, this one's a total outlier. I had no clue this game even existed until doing research for this episode, and you're probably hearing about it for the first time I did, but what we have here is a cooperative party game, a Robotech cooperative party game for up to 15 players that plays in only 10 minutes, and that 10 minutes is real time on a timer. So you're definitely limited to 10 minutes. Uh, this is again set in the Macross era where players are trying to repair the SDF-1, right? It's, it's under attack. It's under assault. Your ship's all destroyed. You need to fix it and also fight off the Zentradi. You're going to do this by playing cards from your hands using a mechanic that to me sounds like Happy Salmon because you have to match the card you're playing with another player at the table and you both put them down and you manage to do the repair of the attack. Interesting concept. Um, this isn't one I've gotten to try myself. And I got to say, I, I don't know, a 10 minute Robotech party game. It, the only thing that is interesting really there to me is the fact it's Robotech. Though I kind of like Robotech and party game. I don't know what's more disconnected from the license, the abstract math games or the party games. Interesting concept, though, and all the power to them. Um, so the people who have played it, though, and I am suspecting that they are all Robotech fans, yeah. have loved it. Nice. Apparently, there is even a soundtrack that was used at cons that people are desperately trying to get released. The, because oh, wow. those who have used it at the con felt it just really boosted the experience and gave you those feels even more. So if you love that fast-paced, crazy co-op style yeah. and Robotech, this one might actually be for you. And I got to admit, if you showed up and said, do you want to play Happy Salmon or Robotech? I'd probably pick Robotech. All right. Our final 2019 board game comes from Strange Machines. So we're looking at Jeff Machinsky and Quinn Washburn. This is Robotech Cyclone Run. Now, similar to how Crisis Point was an advanced version of Force of Arms, Cyclone Run is a similar follow-up to Ace Pilot with more depth. Um, this is the first game that was published in the next generation era of Robotech, which is my favorite era. Now, similar to Ace Pilot, players are rolling dice to activate heroes in order to defeat Invid found on a 3x3 grid and a nice plastic thing stacked up with tiles. Now, I haven't gotten to try this one myself. Um, I am intrigued because Ape Pilot was neat and I felt it was too light. So if this is able to add any more depth, I would probably enjoy it even more. Plus, it's set in, to my opinion, the better series. So I'm curious to try this one out, but I haven't tried it myself. So I don't have much to offer on this one. Discussion on it is very scarce, but I question just how much depth yeah. this Dice Chucker uh, actually offers. All right. I noted that Cyclone, Cyclone, Cyclone? Why did I put Cyclone? Cyclone, Cyclone Run was our last board game of 2019. I use that wording because 2019 also saw the release of two Robotech RPG products. Now, the first is Robotech, a Macross Saga role-playing game, which was designed by Jason Lang and Jonathan M. Thompson, released by Battlefield Press after a very successful Kickstarter. Now, this isn't a full-fledged RPG with all the rules in the book, but rather a licensed setting book for Savage Worlds. So you're going to need a copy of the Savage Worlds Adventure Edition to be able to use this. 
Now, I got to say, when I think RPGs and I think Robotech and what two would mesh well together, I got to say, I think Savage Worlds is a good choice, especially for the high octane combats of the Robotech series. And honestly, a better fit than the old Palladium system. That said, I haven't actually played this or read this to know how well it works at the table. There aren't too many settings that Savage Worlds can't seem to handle these days. Mm -hmm. It gets a lot of well-deserved love for its flexibility. Well, next we have the, sorry, Robotech The Macross Saga role-playing game. No, this isn't what I just said. The last one was a Macross Saga role-playing game. This is the Macross Saga role-playing game. Unfortunately, yet again, we have multiple companies trying to compete to be the real Robotech game. Now, the Macross Saga role-playing game seems to me to be more of a follow-up of the old Palladium system with some significant mechanical changes. Now, it's by Brian Young and Jeff Michinski, a uh, name I'm going to keep saying all night multiple times. Uh, it is published under Strange Machine Games name. Now, it uses a proprietary Advantage 6 system. Now, this is a skill-heavy system that is much more reliant on skills than stats than statistics and based on the reviews i was able to find on this reviewers are finding it a little hard to grok a little hard to grasp and figure out with lots of questions and many people are saying that it's actually much more complicated and crunchier than the old palladium system that said lots of people do seem to be enjoying the artwork the background information and getting new robotech content out there for the first time in many years See, and it's interesting because you and I were very obviously reading very different review sites uh, because go. I got the feel that this is actually the biggest struggle people are having converting from Palladium to this is that this is more of a modern game. It okay. is more of a narrative game. And a lot of the crunchier fans are not dealing well with the shift from crunch to narrative. Now, I don't think it's a full, full on PBTA style narrative, right. but it is moving in that direction, which I think has led to some discomfort in there. Uh, well, sure, yeah. I, I am assuming that, okay, people have been calling it crunchy and hard to learn and difficult and they can't grasp it. Also does sound a lot like how I felt with Fate when I first read it. So it Holy is fair. possible that someone who's used to rolling 27 d20s and then 36 d6s that they hit with their missiles could find something like defining an aspect and using a plot point complicated absolutely and i mean the the lack of distinct um you know oh my skill is three you know yes that that's something that crunchy people know and understand and say to say you have a skill and you're going to roll and ask questions afterwards is is a tough a tough yeah you know it's a paragraph yeah uh, so honestly, I feel though for the real serious Robotech fans who are RPGers, this mm. one might actually be a must buy. Uh, they have been developing Southern Cross and in invasion material for the game. Now, this is where things get weird because apparently the Savage Worlds team is as well, which leads again to this confusion that they're seems to be one license holder and I, and I, as we've been talking here i've even been doing more research and more research and it's really weird because japan anime games isn't actually selling any of these games we've been talking about them selling um for some reason japan anime games doesn't have any robotech games on its website at all I, the japan okay I, again <laughs> maybe it changed over covid uh, I have seen these games at the Japan Anime booth, yep. no, and I have been offered to review them from Japan in, Anime Games. In 2018, they released a press release all about how they were going to be selling these games. Yeah. And that is the only thing on the Japan Anime Games website that comes up when you search for Robotech, is that press release. Um, what I, there is, there is a robotechgames.com. Sorry, robotechboardgames.com. Oh, that's new. Okay. Which is a Strange Machine Games site. So, I, as far as I can tell, Strange Machine Games and Harmony Gold, and at one point, Japan Anime Games got together, and there's a license involved there. I, I think Strange Machine Games is the official license holder who has mm -hmm. been subletting the license to other groups, specifically. Um, escape velocity games and the team who worked on savage worlds so it seems to be sort of a, a, a here's harmony gold up here here's your uh 
um, strange machine games, and then they're letting other people dabble and then into solar it to flare spread somewhere in there too. Well, except Solar Flare no longer mentions it on their website either. Yeah, so so, <laughs> so I'm looking at a copy of Robotech Attack on the SDF-1, which has an MSRP of $79.95. Remember, I mentioned it was exp yep. expensive. I've got the SKU here. It says Publisher Japan Anime Games. Yeah, it's just interesting that it's not on their website. Yeah, that's odd. Like, I am looking at, um, I, I will provide an affiliate link for this in the resources, but uh, Right Stuff Anime is a great source for these Robotech games. They have right. most, if not all of them. Um, including an awesome bundle where you can get everything for the defense of the SDF one, including a neoprene play mat and everything yep. for a hundred bucks, which is actually a significant discount. But again, everything here says Japan Anime Games. Right. Like, and like, if I look up Cyclone Run, Cyclone Run, I shouldn't be doing this for the the section <laughs> of the show, but I'll do it quickly. I see Harmony Gold. I see Japan Anime Games uh, right on the box cover. Yeah, it's just interesting. Japan Anime that Games. It's so not... I don't know on their website so there's there's some strangeness um i'm sure it's a yet another legal dispute over absolutely i mean it's gone on for ages but literally when you go to japan Anime games and type in robotech into yeah. the search results the press release for defend the universe with three games is the only thing <laughs> that comes up from 2018 so the licensing and legal battles on this uh for this license have not yet ended <laughs> Well, we don't. We can't confirm that there is an ongoing legal battle, but there's definitely people arguing over who is the the rightful owner. In a way, I'm I'm not sure if there are or, any or actual the, current the shifting lawsuits. Like, not necessarily, but but shifting licenses. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Putting that aside, uh, maybe in the coffee break we'll do a little bit more research. But putting that aside, let's move on to the next game. So we're we're going to do a jump here to 2020. Not all that long ago. Um, this is the time of COVID. So, of course, the Robotech releases are almost non-existent. Um, most of these games are coming from small indie publishers who got hit hard by uh, everything going on. I'll just start with that. So there was only one Robotech game published in 2020, and that is Robotech Invid Invasion. Now we're back to Solar Flare and King Killingsworth again. Um, unlike the previous two games that were obviously based on the same system and evolution, this is completely new. Um, the only thing similar is you're dealing with cards. That's about it. There is a lot more going on here. Here you are taking on the role of the next generation rebels battling against the Invids set in the next generation series. Now the game's broken into two acts. The first breaking through the line to get the crisis, or sorry, not the reflex point. And then the second actually defeating the Invid Regis and her forces. Now this is done uh, purely co-op. So this is the first purely co-op. Uh, actually Defense SDF one is also co-op. So I can't say the first. The pure, first purely co-op game from Solar Flare, whereas the other the other company had done a co-op game. Um, where you're working together, it plays up to six players. So except for the party game, we're looking at nice big high player counts, uh, card-driven, dice-driven, three different stats for each character, four different forms for each mech, lots of dice chucking, dice rolling, meeting allies. This, to me, is the Robotech fans game. This felt like playing through an actual Robotech adventure. And this one we did review. So again, if you want even more detail, check out our reviews on the blog on YouTube. Indeed, I think this was the first to actually bring solid hobby gaming and the license together in a meaningful way. The defense of the SDS-1 was a little closer to, the, to, to mass market than hobby, whereas this is absolutely yeah. hobby game. Now, moving into last year. There were two Robotech games released, the first being a miniature skirmish game called Robotech Macross Dogfight, the miniature game. Yes, nice long title there. This looks to be like what everyone wanted and expected from Robo D Robotech RPG Tactics. Uh, you've got miniatures here that don't require ex excessive assembly. Yes, you had to put the arms and stuff on, but you're not like building little transforming mechs. Um, it features modern mechanisms, You've got um, elevations and you've got some kind of flight pass system that I got to say reminds me of X-Wing or Wings of War. Uh, honestly, every picture I found of this game looks great. Though I am a little confused because I can see it for sale right now at the publisher's website. Uh, the publisher here is Kids Logic, which I'd never heard of before. And But then you go to their Facebook page and it's all about a Kickstarter. Now it is listed as released in 2021. So perhaps this Kickstarter is for a North American version. I'm not sure. I will say, this one has me somewhat excited. 
But looking at those components, this is not going to be a cheap game. I, it, it looks high end. I just hope it has more success than the last Robotech miniature game and people actually get the final product in their hand. So uh, for price wise, this is listed at least on their website as 70, 70 US MSRP. Oh, that's honestly not bad for what uh, I saw. Apparently this did get to backers in 2021, uh, but not many people, or at least not many people who are board game geek users and talked about it, right. but there were people getting their delivery in July of 2021. Uh, this new Kickstarter is apparently for more content maybe, which okay. is strange because no one is talking about their old content. <laughs> Uh, I downloaded for the rules for this and started flipping through, but I'll be honest, I am not a miniature gamer. And as they started talking about battle platforms and elevations and connecting the flight paths between platforms, uh, my eyes started to glaze over. Fair so enough. they do appear to have some neat stuff there. And as a collectibles company, I expect solid quality from their minis. Yeah, all the pictures of the minis I saw were like, that. those of them are Robotech miniatures I want. That's what I want to see. Yep. Now, our final game tonight is Robotech Reconstruction. This is back to the Macross era again. Everyone loves Macross Robotech. I think it's because they later bought the box sets, and that's how far they were able to get through in a row before their eyes started bleeding or something. Um, this time, this is from a Dr. Wix, and again, it's published by Strange Machine Games. Now, despite Board Game Geek listing this as a 2019 release, I can't find anything out there for this besides a pre-order site. Now, this looks completely different from all of Strange Machine's other games. This is a coin game. Yes, a counterinsurgency war game set in the Robotech universe. In Reconstruction, you have four competing factions, each with their own goals and victory conditions, based on nine very specific episodes of the Macross Sagra, that happened after the first Robotech War, when Earth is undergoing reconstruction after losing 90% of its population, when the Zentradi are starting to be mixed in with the human species. This one promises to probably be the heaviest role-playing, or sorry, Robotech game out there. And I gotta say, it looks pretty good, especially when compared to these other games. So it looks like a lot more work went into the design and layout in this game. I gotta say, I am impressed to see the evolution from Ace Pilot to this, like just the, the, the progression that Strange Machine Games has gone through from very simple, light, mass market almost games to a coin game. I got to say, to me, as a gamer, I like seeing this progression in that publisher. Absolutely. So apparently three days ago, they released pictures of the final production proofs of this game. So, so there's I no think, way it's published. So I think this is the one that has just been stuck in quarantine. Um, I think this is going to be a great game for a certain group of gamers who really dig the coin games and also happen to be passionate about Robotech. As mm -hmm. someone who's not solidly in either camp, I don't think this game is for me, though. So I'm going to say now that Root is as popular as it is, people aren't as scared of coin games as they used to be. And I got to say, this looks more Root level than, say, um, Fire in the Lake or one of the other bigger GMT coin games. So that's it for the officially published and licensed Robotech games out there. Now, in addition to this, the Robotech fan community is a very creative bunch. And you can find Robotech hacks for a ton of different RPGs out there. And there are some board game hacks as well. There are even some unlicensed full games out there, like the Macross 2050 role-playing game from Kamui Shuro, Robotech Skirmish from Warp Spawn Games, and the new Robotech role-playing game, which at least sounds different from the others, which was published in HTML on GeoCities and can still be found out there through the Wayback Machine. That's not to mention the plethora of mecha games obviously based on Robotech, like Firebrands, Mobile Frame Zero, Starship Samurai, and Lancer. So if you love your Robotech, no matter if you're a light, fun gamer, RPG lover, or a hardcore hobby gamer, there's certainly something out there for you in the Robotech universe. Now we're here to answer your gaming and game night questions. If you've got a question for us like Ryan, all you got to do is head to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop, fire off an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or hit me up on social media where I can be found everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. 